We're very cozy today because we don't have um, a lot of space. We're on the camcorder because we're traveling and my battery's gonna die. So, yes, <laughs> stop distracting everybody. They're just watching you. Uh, we wanna give you guys the final, uh, final, final vlog report of the QESB. And so, uh, we're coming to you from the very, very end. We finished up now all of the focus groups and we just had to barrel through. So we're going to go through them one by one um, and put our notes and impressions down and then wrap up this part of the study. So do you want to talk a bit about Dundee and... Did we do Dundee? I yes, remember. I think we did Dundee. Oh yeah, I haven't put that up yet on the video, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so then we had Glasgow, Cardiff and... Colchester. You have to be really loud. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll have to be really loud. So then we had Glasgow, Cardiff and Colchester in the span of four days. Um, and that was... Uh, uh, <laughs> that was quite a bit. Uh, but actually doing it in such a small space of time also gave us um, a lot of proximity to the data. So the impressions that we've had of uh, our participants' experiences of voting um, and of the outcomes have kind of, uh, because they've come all together, we've really got a good sense of the data, so not sp spread out. Um, that's, I think, the positive. The negative, of course, is extremely tiring uh, and quite exhausting. <laughs> tiring, exhausting, you see the, the yes. connection. <laughs> anyone the trend. If anyone does a qualitative analysis of our vlog, the biggest theme is going to be tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but our participants were great. Um, Glasgow in particular, we had one group that had a lot of SMB voters and we were able to really expand and get some information from them on what it meant to vote SMB and how they felt about the, the swing and, um, and also their impressions of the Labour Party and why it did so poorly. So that was very useful for us to hear from people on the ground why they were leaving Labour and the Lib Dems, but mostly it was about Labour. I think they just because we were of the constituencies that we were drawing from. Yeah. And so that was, I think, going to be um, very helpful in contextualizing the quantitative data that's going to be coming out. Yeah. And I think, uh, in terms of uh, SP voters' um, impressions of labor, um, what seems to come out is people haven't necessarily left labor, but they feel that labor has left them. And therefore, the only alternative that they see uh, at the national level on the left is the SNP. And therefore, former Labour voters have voted for the SNP because it matches their values. Um, the way that they perceive the SNP matches their values. Um, and so, it's not necessarily that they have moved, but the party has moved away. And so, one of the things that was coming out over and over again is that in terms of the 2016 general election, uh, 2016 parliamentary election in Scotland, voters definitely want Labour to go back, have a think, and then present a credible alternative. And our participants, many of our participants, definitely felt that Scotland shouldn't turn into a one-party state. And that there should be um, almost like a rainbow of choices um, and, a, uh, a rep and representation in the Scottish Parliament. Definitely. Then moving on to Cardiff. Um, I kind of remember, um, and yeah, the Cardiff was, it was a good group, um, and I think there was a lot of you know, surprise at the results, a lot of people were um, expecting the exit polls to be accurate in terms of hung parliament, they were surprised when it wasn't. Um, we generally find that if you ask people on the left what policies they're going to be paying attention to, they can very easily list off all the stuff that's been covered in The Guardian and The Independent and online about the Equalities Minister and the Disabilities Minister and bringing back fox hunting and benefit cuts. Human Rights. Yeah. Human Rights uh, Act. Yeah. Um, that came up in Scotland too and also a little bit in Wales about the constitutional problems with doing a British Human Rights Act. Um, whereas people on the right that we picked up, because we didn't really have that many people on the right in Scotland, um, tend to focus more on wanting to see the economy well maintained and the deficit continuing to go down and a continuation like a st stable government. 
going forward, a lot of people said they didn't really like the coalition, they didn't think it was that great, so they're happy to see a majority, even if it's a slim majority, going forward. Um, yeah, and in terms of the Welsh Assembly, they just see uh, Labour is maintaining its uh, hegemony. Um, they don't really, although they, there was some awareness that UKIP did very well in Wales and might end up actually taking a few seats in the Welsh Assembly. So we'll be keeping an eye on that hopefully and with another grant step. Yeah. And then Colchester. And then Colchester was three groups in a day, which was a lot. <laughs> And so it was 20, 25 participants uh, in total. Yeah, 25 participants in total. And a really, yeah, a really good spread. We had quite a few Labour voters, a few Lib Dems, um, a few Tories, and surprise, surprise, a couple of UK people, which was brilliant for us because they become almost case studies for us to look at what are being called the shy keepers, um, kind of to match the shy Tories. So, uh, in terms of the quality of the data, it was really brilliant, really, really brilliant. And similar themes, people being shocked um, at the result. We had um, labor people, one person in particular, really, or two um, activists really expressing their mourning for the party. I think our labor activist in Scotland saw the writing on the wall, so he was more psychologically prepared, especially for the SNP suite. Um, I think he was still shocked at the national result, but he kind of mentally prepared, whereas here I think they were more caught off guard and, you know, um, a lot of mentions of, or some mentions of going back to, you know, Thatcher and the start of Thatcher again and just being really, really depressed. One person being personally affected in terms of facing redundancy now as a consequence and so, um, yeah, heart, I mean, heartfelt stuff and people's lives um, being affected. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I'm trying to think, um, what else? <laughs> it was like, it all starts to, any other highlights? We had the UKIP voters. And, and what was interesting was, um, you know, they, they do agree with UKIP on immigration and on the EU, but what they first talk about, and what they talk about most, maybe because it's socially acceptable, is voting against the main parties, voting against parties that no longer really represent working people, common people, and wanting a change. So um, even though Europe does come up and immigration does come up, there was more of a defense in terms of a protest vote, sending a signal. Kind of what we saw um, last time we vote people voting Lib Dem as a way to get proportion or getting a Vivo vote or get a coalition government in, wanting some kind of change to the system. So that does seem to be a theme uh, in all of the nations that we visited that people are a bit fed up with these polished PR stage managed politicians even though that tends to be what people choose. But there was also a recognition that you know, four million people voted for UKIP and they got one vote, and whether or not you think their policies are great, that's not fair for democracy. And so I think the, the, the election itself raised a lot of issues about the quality of elections, the quality of the parties, wanting something different than what's been on offer. Um, and maybe that's you know, every election, but this time people had more options to make that happen, and they took it. Yeah, I mean, uh, just moving away from the themes, unless you want to discuss any more themes. Um, in terms of how, of doing the focus groups, we couldn't get any focus groups which had, uh, which were homogenous in terms of vote choice. Huh? So we ended up with groups where we did have a minority of right-leaning uh, participants, and we had to work pretty hard to make sure that they didn't feel attacked because right from the beginning, right from Dundee, in fact, we had re some people in groups um, who were who felt that they are, they are going to be quite badly affected by a conservative government attacking, almost attacking the people in the group who had voted conservative. Uh, and it was a very much, you are the reason I'm going to go through a lot of things. <laughs> Um, and so we had to work really, really hard to keep the space safe enough for conservative or UK voters to say the way, uh, say, talk about their opinions, um, rather than to kind of just completely... And you could see from the body language of many of the participants that they were kind of retreating into their shell or trying to protect themselves or, you know, so, yeah.
So that's something that we'll be looking at going forward. Um, hopefully we'll have, I mean, a lot of this was just dictated by our budget. And the fact that we had to have free spaces because we didn't have a budget for rooms in every single city, and that ended up being university spaces, which means we were recruiting around the universities because you couldn't recruit people from an hour away and expect them to turn up. But hopefully if we get uh, more funding, we'll be able to get into the rural areas and to more safe Tory seats, um, and maybe back into Clacton with a professional recruiting agency to try to get more of those um, voters to get in a room together and feel like they can talk about those kinds of issues without being judged or having uh, somebody or, you know jump down their throats. And I think we could look at it, I think we learned from the yes-no referendum, that yes voters are very vociferous. Um, and no voters are kind of like the shy Tories, that they'll be more likely to keep their opinions to themselves, but there were more of them. And in the end, it was the people who weren't talking who decided the election, not the people who were. And yeah. so that's something that we picked up now twice, and we're learning to deal with, I think, better and better. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? No. Now we're just going on a train for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think um, we'll keep up with the blog. Obviously, it's not going to be a traveling blog. <laughs> um, but Google Hangouts. Yes, exactly. Google Hangouts. And we have a lot of things in the pipeline. So we will keep everyone updated on how what's coming going. up. Yeah, how things are going. How the, because now, not, just because we have the data doesn't mean it's done. Now we've got to do the hand, enter all of the, the written data and start to do the analysis and prepare the transcripts and prepare the audio for the transcription and uh, contact our advisory board members. And oh, yes, thank yous. Maybe we should cut this real quick. All right, so we want to, from our heart, very much thank, um, let's see, the Stephen Bates at Birmingham is so fantastic. We didn't come and see him on the return visit, but he and his family are absolutely lovely, and we want to thank him. Uh, Roger Scully um, at Cardiff, we hope you like, you, you said you like the tea. We're really happy you like the tea, um, and that we hope you get good use out of the pot um, that we bought you. Uh, Rob Johns at Essex, um, you know. Um, hope you like the beer. Yes, we got a beer. <laughs> and thank you for all of your help. And Mark Shepard, who is just. I was going to do this for Mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, a tour guide for Glasgow took us out to um, showed us Jamie Oliver's restaurant over on George Square, which we loved. Went back again, like made an effort of getting made a point of getting there early, um, and we just had our advisory board this uh, and also Tom Oliver who helped us, um, he came and showed up on his own time to just participate and he's going to be joining us on the bid for the 2016 and he was really helpful and really supportive. And our student assistants. And our student assistants who are, if you remember, I'll go through all the names, we've got Nick uh, at Essex. Gareth in Cardiff. Uh, Suzanne in Cardiff. Yeah. Um, Do we have any Dundee students? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, Stefan in Dundee, Katrina in Dundee. Yes. Um, and that was it. Yeah, I don't think we had any Birmingham students. So you guys helped us so much, and the quality of the data is definitely down to those of you who helped us make sure that our dollars, or not dollars, but our pounds got stretched, pound stretchers, uh, and also just being positive and supportive and friendly and helpful. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So do a big for everybody. Yeah, yeah I can't get that angle. Okay. This. <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you go. <laughs> I think that's it. So we'll see you guys later um, from the road, the last QESB travel vlog. I've been Christy. And I'm Edia. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> through the eye, through the eye, look. It's like, <laughs>